I came to the United States in 1926, and I was 17 then. I landed in San Francisco, California, and I have been working in the farm since then. But I've not been paid much in the job that I have been having as a farm hand. I could only earn about 1500 a year. Housing was not uh, so good then. In fact, it was just a barn or a stable. My name is Rachel, and four years ago, I started filming myself cooking Filipino food and talking about Filipino history. For this series, I asked my friends and community to help me tell a few stories about the rich history of Filipino activism in the San Francisco Bay Area. This is Lhasa and Legacy. Our first story begins in the heart. In the 1920s and 30s, Filipino men emigrated en masse from the Philippines to America in search of education and work. Following the Chinese Exclusion Act and immigration acts that barred all Asian immigrants except for Filipinos, Filipinos became the new exploitable labor. And so many of them were forced into stoop labor on farms, in factories, and canneries all along the West Coast. We call this generation the Manong generation. Manong meaning older brother in Ilocano. I connected with Vivian Bajaran to hear a first-hand account of what it was like for a Manong. So my name is Vivian Ellen Galia Bajaran. I am the daughter of a Manong. My dad is Jose Fabarito Bajaran. I didn't know to the extent that he was part of the Manong generation until I read his diary. So I have pictures and I have a diary. So he wrote a lot and some of his experience are very vivid. When I was in college, early college, uh, and I took my first Asian American studies class, I read Carlos Belusan, America is in the Heart. Uh, and so that's the staple ethnic studies um, book you read for Filipino history. And so I didn't know until I took that class. I think my dad is part of that history. When I'm like reading um, some of Carlos Belusan's experiences and I'm trying to process um, and I'm reading a story of my dad's, it's like, you, you, you know, whatever, they're like, Filipino monongs experience this, this, and this. So you can imagine as a student, I'm like, wow, that's real, because it happened to my dad. The average monthly salary for a farm worker in 1932 was $20.83. My dad was offered 14 per month. If I were to connect to his older brother, and I don't know very much, he died here, and that was his life from beginning to end was um, that stoop labor, exploitation. My, my uncle basically, um, he wanted to go back to the Philippines, honestly, when my, my, my dad came, he was ready to go back. But during that era, it's just a lot of hard work um, in the fields and um, just very low pay. At this time, I was working in San Pedro getting 35 cents an hour. We were canning salmon. I mean, sardines, tuna, and mackerel. At that time, that used to be good wages, 35 cents an hour. You know, you can buy a lot of things for 35 cents an hour. So what happened? Why did we elect to form a union at that time? because of the fact that we were work from 12 to 18 hours a day without any overtime. You can imagine how tired you get, how stinky you get. Boy, you stink. And you work 18 hours a day, 35 cents an hour. If you ever try to go to San Pedro, you better not don't get dressed up because by the time you live there, you smell like a fish. <laughs> the Manong generation didn't simply accept these conditions. 
In fact, they started some of the first labor movements in canneries and amongst farm workers in this country. In 1965, the Delano Grape Strike began, with figures like Larry Itliong and Philip Vera Cruz leading 800 Filipino farmers in the Agricultural Workers Organizing Committee, or the AWOC, to strike the grape fields. They were striking to earn a simple thing, to be paid the federal minimum wage. The AWOC, together with the Mexican farm workers, formed the United Farm Workers of America. Their strike would last five years and earn the first grape grower union contracts, and it was Filipino migrant workers who led the way. So with my director of photography, Scott, we took a drive down to San Jose to visit a park that pays tribute to these important figures in Filipino history. My name is Daniel Lazo, and I am an organizer with Lead Filipino, uh, which is part of the Delano Monongs Park Committee, and I'm actually one of the kids that submitted the name for the park. I grew up um, just not too far from here. I went to Filipino Youth Coalition and learned a lot about the Monongs there, and I was able to go actually to Delano uh, for their 50th anniversary. When I was there, I was just really inspired by what the Monongs were doing in terms of fighting for their rights and really you know, advocating for not only themselves, but the people around them. Um, what I really liked about the movement was it was really multi-generational and really um, part of the whole community. And so that's really where the inspiration of the name came from. With our joined efforts, we gathered other organizations together. So Lead Filipino, FONS, uh, Filipino Youth Coalition, and just many other people together in community to really figure out like how we can get this name really out there. We rolled deep going into the Parks and Rec Commission. Uh, we went to city council and advocated for that. And we got unanimous votes all across the way because we brought people with us. Being there to celebrate it, I'm pretty sure I cried. Um, it added to my identity as a Filipino American, just in general to be part of the history and um, be part of the community. And even, you know, to say thank you to Daniel for, you know, proposing the name and so forth. I still sit with it. You know, young people can go here. People can play on the playground and then go read the sign and be like, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that I could be recognized here, especially as like a Filipino American. Um, I'm, I'm going to be excited when I bring my, my nieces and nephews here and show them the park and how, um, have them play around because they're going to also have a piece of history for themselves here. It's a nice thing to have a Jollibee's. That's how you know there's a lot of Filipinos in San Jose, but to have a dedicated park um, is, is very nice. Well, the food I ate is I ate with my people and I ate what the Filipinos ate. So I think I'm satisfied. What kind of food is it? Uh, well, usually uh, uh, Spanish kind of food, the way we cook it. In honor of the Manongs and the solidarity shown between the Filipino and Mexican farm workers, I decided to make menudo, a dish that's found in both Filipino and Mexican cuisine. While I did learn about the farm workers' labor movement in the 60s, I only ever learned about the role of Mexican farm workers. I never heard about the Manongs or their role in catalyzing the farm workers' movement. And this erasure of Filipino history is not just relevant towards our representation and identity, but had profound effects on the aging Manong generation, who some would say got left behind. Due to anti-miscegenation laws, many remained bachelors for their entire life. Many would go on to live in the International Hotel in San Francisco, and many would live in Agbayani Village, a community founded by Larry Idliong. And so I'd like to share a poignant quote. If there is a God, and he can hear my thoughts. I hope he tells my father that someday we will accomplish some relief or way for all Filipino senior citizens to live in comfort and dignity in their last few years in America. That for their sacrifices in this country, their descendants are working together toward a better life for all Filipinos. Continue to tell stories of your elders, uplift your elders, ask them to tell you a story. It, it's really important in terms of memory making and keeping, you know, the history alive. The, the Lino Monongs are, you know, they're long gone, but we still ha currently have other generations of Monongs and Monongs, right? You know, and if they need help, help them. It's the simplest thing to do is to help them. Don't treat them as invisible. 
when you are organized, when you have a union, you feel that you have someone to help you, that you are not alone. And when you meet people, you can look at them and be proud of it. And never you never lose that uh, inferiority complex they call in America. So I think that's about all. Now, would you say that same thing in the Gullah? Would you say that in what a union means in the way of dignity? Would you say that in the Filipino language? Kung tayo, mayroon tayong union at tayo magkakaisa, itayo e hindi tayo nakahihiya na makihalo sa mga puti o sino man na mga tao na masasalubong natin o nagtatanong sa atin o kausap sa atin hindi tayo mahiya kay nalaman natin na tayo eh, mga tao rin na nalaman ang hirap 